Do they do they play with an attitude? Him and Blewett and your long snappers. <laughs> yeah, they're playing. They're playing with some confidence right now. Uh, you know, Winslow uh, for a young guy. I mean, he's he's really talented, and you know, he works hard at his craft. I'm a, you know, I hear I hear somebody moving around in my office, and I and I go in there and look, and it's him and they're watching film. Um, he, I mean, he's a hard worker. Uh, Blewett, again, he's had uh, you know the more success he has, the more confidence he gets, and. Um, you know, the long snappers, they've been here for a while. They're mature kids. They take a lot of pride in what they do. So uh, they do, they do, they're all playing with some confidence. For, forgive my ignorance here, but what does a punter watch film of? He watches, the, you, you'd be surprised, <laughs> uh, his steps, his drops. Most of the things uh, that the punter does uh, is fundamentals. Um, you know, his leg swing, where he's striking the ball, where he's dropping the ball. Uh, there's a lot of fundamentals involved, and people that just kick the ball. There's a lot more to it than just kicking the ball. What uh, what do you say to him? It looked like he's sort of definitely improved the last couple of games after yeah. a couple of so-so games early on. What do you say to him to sort of keep him mentally in it uh, early on? Uh, nothing. I mean, he's a mature kid. He works. He just he wasn't in a groove. You know how sometimes athletes they get in a groove, all their fundamentals fall into place. They get in the right place mentally, and um, he did that himself. As the special teams coach, were you a little bit nervous when Narduzzi called the fake punt? No. no. You know, when we draw up a fake, you know, I, I got to feel like we got a really good chance of getting it. Otherwise, I'll tell Coach no. Mm-hmm. So I knew we had a really good chance of getting it. What made you so confident? Well, just watch what people do, take advantage of the things people do. And I've been around a long time, and I, I know what, you know, what guys do and what they haven't seen. You know, we're kind of the oddball. A pro style punt formation. Uh, us and Virginia Tech are the only two teams in the ACC that use a pro style punt formation. So for weeks on end, everybody spends all their time uh, matching personnel and matching formations. So all of a sudden, they get to a pro style punt, and it's it's the oddball. So people don't defend uh, pro style punt uh, as often, and so there's some things because that's the only thing I've ever done. No, there's some there's some things that get forgotten. Can you compare pro style punt formation to everybody else? What everybody else is doing? What's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah, no, that's a ton of difference. The snapper does not have to block and shield punt. Uh, you spread people out uh, based on how people line up. There's several people that don't have to protect. Um, you, know, you got three guys in the back that really don't cover. So that's that's a ton of difference. I mean, it's it's not even close to comparison. Mm-hmm. What is it? It looks like Avante sort of took over the punt return duties last week. Is that something you think will continue moving forward? Probably. You know, just taking a lot off board. I mean, he's he's a big part of what we do on offense, and uh, just looking down the road, you know, we're just trying to take as much off him, off of him as, as we can. He's taking a lot of hits. You know, you know he's running the ball some. And he's, you know, he's catching a lot of passes. So those are just a few more hits he doesn't have to take. Is it the kind of thing though, where if you're in a situation where you think you might need a big return, he's still an option for you there? He can be, but right now, uh, you know, Maddox is a return guy. Maddox can make some big plays. And all those things. Is that not a similar situation with all the snaps Avante's playing on defense, or is it more of a factor of it's got to be one of those two guys back there? No, we've got several other guys that can return punch too. It's just a matter of the cumulative effect of taking uh, the number of shots that the boy's taking in the end of the You know, Maddox, Maddox doesn't take as many playing DB. Mm-hmm. You know, I think uh, I think uh, he carried the ball 23 times last week. That's 23 shots. I'm not for sure. Maddox got hit 23 times. Well, special teams obviously important in every game. The last time Carolina was here was a was a game changer. Do you still look at that tape? Talk to the guys, enough guys around to remember that. No, we just look at what people do. We look at who we are, and we try to stop what they do. And, you know, I don't break up what happened three years ago. Right? What impresses you about what they do? Well, they got good players. <laughs> That's where it starts, good players. They got long guys, athletic guys that can run. The little return guy, he takes chances. He's not afraid. Um, you know, their punt game, um, you know, they give you a lot of formations. Same thing on their, on their field goal. They do a lot of things in their kickoff coverage. Uh, it impresses you, but on the other hand, uh, we knew this was coming. So you spend time in the summer preparing for this. So uh, if you 
if you don't take time in the summer and prepare them for Thursday night game and you know they do all these things, then it can be quite a change. It's just another day at all. Looking at your other job but with the running backs, uh, do you feel like you're starting to develop some roles there with Audrey and, and Chris and I guess Darren too? Yeah, you know, um, the guys, they're getting better each week. They're, they're, they're putting forth a lot of effort. They're trying hard. Um, and there are some roles that are beginning to develop. You know, we don't have a third down back. We don't have a short yardage back. You know, they're all responsible for all facets of the game. Um, but obviously, uh, uh, Allison is 235 pounds. So he's, he's, he will specialize more in short yard situations. Rather than that, we call a play. Whoever's in the game will run that play. Is he also a guy just because of, you know, the style he runs with? He's a guy that benefits from – a bigger volume of work than maybe Chris, who's more of a, a big play guy. You know, you know the mo- the volume of plays you get based on a lot of things. Um, you know, Austin's a smart guy. He's, he's the smartest guy, in the and uh, he makes the fewest mistakes. One of the things with winning is eliminating things that cause you to lose, and so uh, Allison does that. He, he makes the fewest mistakes. Um, and, I, and those other guys aren't making a lot of mistakes. It's not like they're, they don't know what's going on. But uh, overall, uh, he gives us the best chance to win. I try to play them all in the first half and then try to determine in the second half who gives us the best chance to win. And uh, that's not to say if Chris gets hot or, or Hall gets hot, they may play more in the second half. But, you know, just looking at what happened in the first half, making the decision how you play the second half. Is um. How is, is Connor still trying to contribute in your room when you have meetings? Is he still around? Yeah, he's in every meeting. He's mm-hmm. in every meeting. He's around. He's still learning football. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, uh, he's not playing, so he, he's not he's not in a leadership role. But you know, he's still in there, and he knows everything we're doing. If he magically could get cleared medically today, today he could play tomorrow. Mm-hmm. How are the guys dealing with fatigue and physicality? You know, the, the only guy that I, I see hitting a, a wall is tall. And he hasn't played that many snaps. It's just the intensity of practice and the intensity of meetings. But if you look at it, I mean, they're all, you know, like last week, uh, um, Allison played 35 plays, I think, maybe 40 plays. Uh, Chris played 26 plays. So, you know, we do the same thing in practice. We roll the guys. You know, we're very conscientious about not getting worn out. And we track how many plays they play each game, whether it's offense, defense, and special teams. And we train them at the beginning of the week. You know, they got GPS monitors on them, so we know exactly how many yards they're running. If I see a guy, you know, he gets a 5,000-yard day, cut it back to the next day. This Carolina's defense, or especially run defense, isn't particularly good statistically. <laughs> Do you think that's just uh, – is that a, their talent, or is it just because they're always winning? Uh, you go, you go look at them on defense. When I, when I got on the plane, uh, Sarah and I, I looked at the statistics too. And I'm like, well, they give up a lot of yards defensively when I turn on the tape. And what's on the tape don't match what's on the paper. They're, they're talented. You know, they're, they're big. You know, they're inside guys, 300 pounds, 6'4", you know, 270 pound ends. They got linebackers, you know, all good sides to run. So, you know, statistics are a little deceiving. They're, they're pretty good. Is Part of what you're going to try to do this week you know, in the running game, keeping their offense off the field? Well, you know, at this point in the season, you, you develop an identity and you are who you are. You know, we try to do everything we can to win the game. And, and we try to take advantage of what the defense gives us. And so if we play a team that gives us an advantage on the perimeter, we'll try to get the ball on the perimeter. We think we can, you know, blow the box and push them around. We'll run the ball, so you know we just we just we're just trying to at the end of the night have one more point than the other team. However, we got to do it on offense. Coach Chambers really got a keen eye at looking at defenses, and you know we got to, we got a better staff on offense, but we can look at defenses and really have a good feel for what our guys can do. And we're just trying to just develop a game plan for them to be challenged. What have been some sort of hallmarks for you throughout your career of teams that are good in the fourth quarter? I'm sorry. Teams that are good in the fourth quarter. What are sort of some consistent hallmarks of, of those teams that, you, that you've been around? 
Well, the first thing is teams that win in the fourth quarter, you know, the game's got to be close. It's got to be winnable in the fourth quarter. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, the second thing is you got to uh, believe in what you do. Just keep grinding um, and just keep doing what you do and know that eventually that the defense will make a mistake. No, what we're doing is, you know, what we've done is uh, it's not real hard, you know, to figure out. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. You know, you have to jump in there and stop and run. And then that's a guy that wears number 23 out there. Wherever he is out there, number one, that's probably not a good decision. So we just take advantage. We look at defenses and just try to take advantage and just try to do what our guys can do. We try not to ask them to do too many things. To win the game. I guess conversely, have you ever been on any teams that didn't have, you know, that sort of fourth quarter mentality? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, fourth quarter starts, you know, Coach Narduzzi started that with, you know, we're going to have a party in the fourth quarter. Those guys, it's wild. You see them jumping around, dancing, spraying water, and guys out there doing push ups, and they didn't do the same thing at practice. So the guys have kind of embraced that fourth quarter, you know, style. Thanks, Coach. All righty. Thank you.